with the Nintendo Switch getting remakes of Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door and Super Mario RPG, fans are wondering if the Mario & Luigi series might get a chance on the Switch or the Switch 2. With the end of Alpha Dream, the company that produced the Mario & Luigi games, many believe that this incredible RPG series will cease to exist. However, a recent survey sent out by Nintendo heavily acknowledged the existence of the Mario & Luigi games. It asks a bunch of questions about which Mario RPGs people like, and talks about if people want to see more returning characters or more new characters. It shows Nintendo is listening to the fans, and we may be seeing more interesting characters and mechanics in future Mario RPGs. Instead of covering the survey in depth, I want to use this Mario & Luigi survey as an opportunity to discuss what I have wanted to see in the Mario & Luigi series since the very beginning, monster collecting. I think it's genuinely possible that the Mario & Luigi series will go in the direction of monster collection with their next game, and that they've been testing the waters before our very eyes. This is Bowser's Minions and Bowser Jr.'s Journey, pieces of side content present in the remake of Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga and Bowser's Inside Story. The main feature of this side content is the ability to build different armies of Mario franchise enemies to use in fights against others. When I first saw this, I thought it was everything I ever wanted, and then I played it. These pieces of side content are a bit shallow. Most of the time, whether or not you'll win is decided by which team members you choose beforehand. During the battles, there is minimal opportunity to execute action commands or set off strategic moves. The rest is just watching the enemy knock into each other. But the bigger flaw with Bowser's Minions and Bowser Jr.'s Journey is how we get the new team members. They just sort of join your team after battles. There's no going out of your way on a big world map to find the exact Bowser baddie you want. The map is mostly linear, with one battle happening pretty much right after the other. Something magical about Pokemon is how each player's experience is so different based on the team they put together. The Bowser minions do not capture this magic at all. Both of these issues come from the fact that these pieces of side content are just that side content. What I'm hoping we'll see in the future is a full-fledged monster collection game set in the Mario & Luigi engine. But how would a game like this even work? What would the battles look like? Something that the Mario & Luigi series does well is making the player feel as though they are controlling multiple characters. You don't just play as Mario or Luigi, it's Mario and Luigi. They walk in tandem and you can control their actions with a corresponding button, being the A button for Mario and the B button for Luigi. In the overworld, you use these buttons to jump, use hammers, or perform other actions. And these button assignments are carried over to the battle system. When the series moved from the two button GBA to the four button DS, two more characters were added to Mario and Luigi, the babies, that were controlled with the X and Y button. The Switch has the same button layout as the DS, and that is how we navigate the gameplay in this hypothetical monster collection Mario & Luigi game. We will still have Mario & Luigi as the main fighters of this game. It just wouldn't be Mario & Luigi without it. There would still be the standard jump and hammer attacks that the bros are known for. Each bro would be followed by a Bowser minion of the player's choice that can be switched out in between battles. So let's walk through the possible options for a typical turn of this hypothetical game. Let's say you've got Mario, a Koopa Troopa, Luigi, and a Goomba in a tussle with these two Hammer Bros. When you start the battle, you have three tiers of choices. Standard attacks, minion attacks, and bros attacks. Standard attacks are free. Minion attacks incur a small BP cost, and bros attacks incur a larger BP cost. Your standard attacks are things like the jump and hammer for the Mario Bros, and a basic attack from the minion. In place of a standard attack, you can also use an item or try to run away, if you're a coward. A minion attack has your Mario Bro team up with their respective minion for an attack. For example, Mario could kick his Koopa shell for more damage. If you use the minion attack, both that Mario Bro and their minion use their turn to do so. So you can't use a minion attack and then have your minion do a standard attack. 
They're both done for the turn. Then you've got the bros attacks, which have Mario and Luigi work together with their minions to attack the opponent. All four players going at their enemies at once. So now that we've talked about attacking, let's talk defending. Something that sets Mario and Luigi apart from an RPG like Pokemon is that when you are attacked, you get a chance to avoid your enemy's attacks and possibly even counterattack. You do this by pressing your character's corresponding button in order to avoid Avoid an incoming threat. Since there are four characters on the field, it could be too much to try and focus on four defending fighters at once. How do we solve this? We take a page out of Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door, where Mario has the option to swap positions with his partner. In our game, Mario or Luigi can swap with their partner, and the two in the front are going to be the ones taking the attacks. There could still be some aerial attacks that can hit the back, but it'll never be more than what a player can handle. This encourages the player to understand enemy attack cycles and place their characters in the most optimal position to defend. So that's pretty much how the battle system would work. Oh wait, there would be one more element of battle exclusive to this game, capturing enemies. Something about Pokemon that I appreciate is that every single Pokemon that you fight in the game is theoretically obtainable on your own team. Like that Pokemon that trainer just had? That Pokemon will be available somewhere within the game. I think the monster collecting Mario and Luigi game should follow the same philosophy. Every battleable enemy has the potential to be on your team. So how do we get these enemies to join us? No, we're not gonna use Pokeballs. I think we can do a little better than that. At first, I thought that the answer would be that whoever hypothetical villain this game has would be brainwashing these Bowser minions. And if you snap them out of the brainwashing, they join you. It's a fine idea and probably what Nintendo would do. I find it too cliche. I toyed around with the idea of it being about respect. Like the Mario Bros fight so honorably that these guys, they, they just gotta join them. While that would feel earned by the player, I don't think there's a good way to implement that gameplay-wise. Then it hit me. Food! If you feed your enemies, it makes them want to be your friends. Most Paper Mario games include a chef character who cooks you dishes depending on the ingredients you bring them. While this is always a cool addition to the game, the cooking doesn't add much more than just it looks cooler and heals a little more health. If this Mario and Luigi game had a chef character, they would make dishes that correspond with making different Bowser baddies join your team. Maybe Goombas like to eat mushrooms. Cheap Cheeps like fried seaweed. Give a shy guy a filet mignon steak dinner, I don't know. The possibilities are endless. So now, not only do we have a bunch of monsters to collect, but food items will be scattered all throughout the Mushroom Kingdom. You won't only be completing an encyclopedia of enemies, but a cookbook as well. It's a completionist's dream. So what sort of story would accompany a game like this? Personally, I like Bowser to not be the villain in Mario RPGs. I much prefer him as a rival character. Someone you can sometimes fight, but also team up with against a common enemy. So I've got a great use for Bowser in this game, Damsel in Distress. Whatever villain this game has will kidnap the King of Koopas and put the frame on Mario and Luigi. This is why Bowser's minions will at first attack you, thinking you've taken away their king. But once you calm them down with a nice meal, they realize that you weren't responsible and team up with you to save Bowser. But wait, why would Mario and Luigi want to save Bowser? Well, you know how every Mario and Luigi game has a star that everyone is trying to get a hold of? Bean star, cobalt star, dark star, all that. Bowser's got a star too and the villain wants to use that star to take over the Mushroom Kingdom. Whatever villain this is, they are much more tough and threatening than Bowser. And Mario and Luigi agree that it's better for Bowser to stay the greatest threat to the Mushroom Kingdom. I mean, the dude's so dumb he puts an ax behind him that drops him into lava. He's much easier to deal with. I'm sure I could go into a deeper story, but beyond that, I would just be writing Mario fan fiction. And I would only do that if Illumination wanted to hire me to write one of the upcoming Mario movies. The reason I mentioned a story is to wrap a nice little bow on the kind of gameplay that I would hope to see in a future Mario and Luigi game. Will Nintendo do this? I can't know for sure. The one thing that makes me hopeful something like this could happen is the existence of things like Bowser's Minions and Bowser Jr.'s Journey. Other than that, this is nothing more than one big Pokemon and Mario fan hoping his two favorite franchises could come together in this way. Hey, if you like this video, check out some of my other content. Some other things I cover in my videos are crazy video game challenges, like in this video where I talk about how hard it 
it is to get yourself 999 coins on this one stage in Mario Party 7. Or if you want to hear more of my game criticisms and some ways I think games can be improved, check out this video about 1UP Mushrooms and whether or not they belong in modern Mario games. If you like what I do and want to see me do more of it, consider becoming a channel member or checking out my Patreon, link in the description. Thank you so much for watching, see you next time.